The Jewish people not only experienced a miraculous salvation, but they turned around and they attacked their enemies. And the Megillah records that in Shushan they killed 500 Amalekim. Whereupon the king, King Ahasuerus, turns to his queen Esther. And he says to her, Whatever you want, I'll give you. What's your request? And Esther makes a very odd request. Do me a favor, king. Tomorrow, I want to hang the ten sons of Haman. What an unusual request. The ten sons of Haman were already killed. Why is Esther? She's given a, a blank check. The king says, whatever you want. Esther could have asked for anything. And she chooses to hang ten dead Amalekim? It is well known, the stirring observation and discovery of Rabbi Michal Ber Weismandel, the great master of the codes of the Torah. As we know, historically, in 1945, in the aftermath of the Holocaust, an international military tribunal was set up to try the Nazi criminals. And they chose the city of Nuremberg, because Nuremberg was a hotbed of Nazi activity, and that's where many of the demonstrations took place. And the trial began in 1945, and it was postponed until 1946. And 11 Nazis were tried. So you had Goring, and Frick, and Ribbentrop, and Streicher, Yemach Shemam 11 Nazis were convicted. And they were sentenced not to be shot, which would have been a more respectable way to go. They were sentenced to be hanged. And when these Nazis heard they were going to be hanged, they shuddered. They, they felt this was a demoralizing, degrading way to die. One of them committed suicide. Goring committed suicide. And these Nazis were supposed to be hanged in the year Tavshin Vav, 1946, but the church pled for amnesty and therefore their sentence was postponed to Hishan Rabbah, Tavshin Zion. Says Rabbi Chobar Weismandel, look at the way the ten sons of Haman are written in the Megillah. Mir miraculously, mysteriously, we have in those ten sons, in Parshandasa, a small tuf, in Parmashta, a small shin, in Vaisasa, a small zayin, tuf shin zayin, the precise year that another ten Nazis, ten Amalekim, were hanged. And therefore when Esther asked the king, if it pleases the king, tomorrow can we hang the ten sons of Haman? says in Michal Bar Weismandel, she was referring not only to those actual ten sons of Haman, but to the ten Nazis who many hundreds of years later would also be hanged in front of public view to give the Jewish people some confidence and a boost realizing and recognizing that the Rebbe Hashem is with them. And as we know, when Streicher was taken to the gallows, he uttered the mysterious haunting words Purim Fest, 1946, realizing that this again was a celebration of Purim. And this is information which is pretty well known, as Rabbi Chobar would point out, that the year Tavshin Zion in the Hebrew calendar actually appears six times. Tavshin Zion, which is 707, 1707 of the Jewish calendar, 2707. So how do we know that it's referring to the sixth time 707 appears? Well, that's why you have a big Vav in Vaisasa, indicating the sixth time 707 occurred in the year 5707. This is information that many are familiar with, but let's put it in a totally new context. Because why is this information included in the Megillah Sester? There's another important anomaly in the Megillah, we also have a number of big letters. In the beginning of the Megillah, you have a big ches, chur karpas. And at the end of the Megillah, when Esther wrote the Megillah, there's a big tuf, vatich taiv. And incredibly, the achroinim, the mekubalim, beginning with the Yismach Moshe and his sefer, Osis Rimoini, the grandson of Chsam Soifer, Rav Shimon Soifer, and Taras Moshe, Parshas Tetzaveh, Rav Shamshin Me'ashtapoli himself, brings that the big tuf and the big ches represent the year Tavches, 1648-1649. And in that year, the decree of Haman actually came to fruition. Haman wanted to annihilate the Jewish people, and to a degree that came to a fruition in the year of the big Tav and the year of the big Ches, that's when his Gezerah came out. 
Yitzchak Moshe writes that God in His mercy deferred the Gezerah to that time in history when there would be more Jews so that we would be able to survive such a catastrophe. So let's make the following observation. In the year Tuf Ches, 1648-1649, that's when the Svarim tell us the decree of Haman came out into the world, was magnified, came to fulfillment. That's why the letters are big. Well then, the small letters, Tuf Shin Zayin, 1946, that's when Haman became small. That's when he was mitigated. That's when the klipa of Amalek was squelched. And therefore, Megillus Esther is a historic document that contains in it future tragedy of the Jewish people. And hauntingly then, if we have a big vav in the Ten Sons of Haman, that would somehow indicate a time when Haman's decree came out into the forefront and was magnified. And we can't help but think the big Vav, the big six, sure enough, that is another time when Haman's decree came to fulfillment to some extent, the six million. And therefore, Megillus Esther is a historic document that contains in it a degree of tragedy, and that's why the early Achroinim say, Rabbi Yaakov Chagiz writes that that's why the name of Hashem does not appear in Megillus Esther as if Hashem did not want to associate with these difficult times. But on the other hand, the salvation of Purim is the source of salvation for the Jewish people for all times, and that is why the Megillah will never become Batal. And therefore we daven every Matzai Shabbos, that just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu saved us in the times of Purim, we always daven weekly, La Yehudim Haisa Oira, the Simcha, the Sasa in Bikar. We ask Hashem to invoke that salvation and bring it to the Jewish people in all times. Let us all be mispalel, Cain, Tihiyah, Lanu, wishing everyone a Freilach and Parim.